Hello, I'm Kay from the Spectre team and in this video I will show you how to add a blog to your website. Now this video is part of a course organized in a playlist, which you will find a link in the description below. And if you want to get the most out of it, I strongly encourage you to follow this course in the exact order the videos are organized in the playlist. Now in order to help you complete this project, you'll find the link in the description of this video where you can download the course files. Now this course is free and even if you don't have web hosting, you can either use ZipWP or use a local solution like Local by Flywheel for example. But if you want to take your website to the next level with awesome features like advanced animations, Instagram integrations and much much more, consider using Spectra Pro and of course you'll find a link in the description below. Now, like I mentioned, you can complete the course project with free tools alone. And what we're going to do in this video is no exception. But in today's video, as a bonus, if you are interested in or already have Astro Pro and Spectre Pro, I will also show you how to take your blog to the next level. Because yes, there are several ways you can add a blog to your website. And I will show you how to do it with the Astro theme. Then I will show you how to do it with the free version of Spectra. And as mentioned, I will also show you an alternative with both Astro Pro and Spectra Pro. So let's start with the free version of Astra. And the first step, and that's valid for all methods, is that we need to add the content. So open the course files and then navigate to the text subfolder. And next we're going to open this file. So here at the top you see the blog post titles. And here you see the single blog post text. So let me copy the first title. And in WordPress, you want to go to posts, add new posts, and let's paste the title we just copied. Now let's go back to the course file and now let's copy the content of the blog post. Next, click here where it says type and we're just going to paste what we just copied. Awesome. Now make sure you are on the post tab here and then click on set featured image. And I'm going to select this image here. As you can see in the file name, it ends by 01. So then for the second article, I'm going to use the next image that ends by 02, then 03, and so on. And once I'm done, I'll start again from one because we have nine blog posts we're going to add. All right, so let me select my image and then click on set featured image. And next, click on publish and publish one more time. Okay, now I'm just going to repeat the operation for the remaining eight blog posts, but it's exactly the same thing. So I'm just going to click on the icon here in the top left to go back. This is my blog post list. I'm going to delete the initial one that was there by default. So I just hover over it, click on trash, and now I'm just going to add the rest of the articles. Okay, so now we have all of our blog posts. And as the name says, these are single blog posts. But now we need a page where all of these blog posts can be referenced. So for that, you want to go to pages, add new page, and let's call it blog. Then click on publish and publish one more time. Now let me close this. And now if I click on the preview icon, as you can see, this is just an empty page. So let me close this. Now let me click on the icon in the top left corner. And next let's go to settings, reading post page, click on the drop down and select our newly created blog page. Then click on save changes. Next, go to appearance menus. Make sure the primary header menu is selected. Then click on the view all tab and let's add the newly created blog page. So select it and click on add to menu. And now let's drag it between testimonials and contact. And finally, click on save menu. All right, now let's hover over the name of our website, click on visit site. And first of all, as you can see, blog has been added to our navigation. So just click on it and voila. As you can see, we see all of our blog posts. And if I click on a blog post, here is the complete single blog post content. Now let me scroll back up and let's go back to our main blog page. And as you can see, it's super easy to add a blog to your website, but let's say we want a different layout because here you can see the image is pretty big. You have an excerpt, then you need to scroll down. What if I want a bird's eye view of the last six to nine posts, for example? Well, for that, we need to access the Astra customizer. So you can either click here on customize, or if you're starting from the dashboard, you would go to Astra, 
customize. Next, you want to go to blog and blog archive. Now, in order to see what we're going to do here in the navigation, I'm going to click on blog so that we will see the changes reflected in real time. So first of all, where you see blog title area, click on the little arrow. And here you see banner layout. We're going to select layout number two. Next, we want to enable it on the blog page. So toggle this on. And next, click on the design tab. And where you see container background, select custom. And the background color should be set to color number five. Next, title color should be set to color number six. All right, let's scroll back up and let's go back one step now let's scroll down and where you see blog layout as you can see we have several options here this is the main option that we saw next we have the list option so as you can see a different layout we have the cover option or the grid option next where you see post per page you want to change it from 10 to 6 so let's check yep only 6 and as you can see now we see the pagination. So if I go back to 10, well, the pagination disappears because we have nine blog posts. So let me go back to six. And here is our pagination. Now let me scroll down. And for the post structure, let's turn off post meta, excerpt, and we're just going to keep featured image, title, and read more. All right, let's scroll back up and let's click on the design tab. And let's change the post title size to 25 pixels. And let's set the meta font size to 15 pixels. Awesome. So that was for the blog post archive. But now we want to take care of the single blog post template. So let's go back one step and click on single post. Now let's scroll down and let's make sure related posts is turned on. So now if I click on a single post, let me scroll down and as you can see, I have the related post section. Now let me scroll back up and click on design. Great. Now we need to take care of the spacing here. So let me scroll back up and where you see outside, we want zero all around. And next where you see inside, we want 60 pixels all around. Now let's click on publish one more time. And now if we go to the front end of our website and go to the blog, as you can see, it works as intended. So we have this beautiful grid. And if I click on any blog post, as you can see, our blog post is looking clean and fresh. We have related posts and just below we have the comment section. Now, if you have Astro Pro, you can use the same approach to customize your blog, but with way more settings. Now I've already covered that in this video. And since today's video is part of a course dedicated to Spectra, Instead, I will show you how to add a blog with the free version of Spectra. And as mentioned before, later on in the video, I will also show you how to use a combo of Astro Pro and Spectra Pro to take your blog to the next level. So let's see what we can do with the free version of Spectra. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is go to settings, reading, and that same option we changed before, we're going to put it back to select and click on save changes. And let me show you what this does. Now, let me go back to the front end and I have not refreshed this page yet. So this is the previous version. But now that we just changed our setting, let me refresh. And as you can see, we're back to square one. So let me explain this. As you can see, there is nothing in this page except from the title. And if we go to pages, all pages and edit our block page, if you remember, there is nothing in it. So it makes sense, right? But let me go back to the dashboard, then go to settings, reading. When we tell WordPress, the post page is the blog page, but it could be any other page. Basically, what's going to happen is WordPress is going to overwrite whatever is on that page and make it the blog page. And then the theme takes over. And in our case, it's the Astra WordPress theme. And that's why the blog page, which is empty, gets overwritten and shows the post grid. But we can also add a post grid manually with Spectra. And now you know how it works. Let me show you. So let's go back to pages, all pages. And first of all, let's do a little bit of cleaning. The order of the page is not quite what we want. So we want testimonials to come just before contact. So let's take a look. Click on quick edit and you can see the order number is 30. And let's check contact. It's 40. 
So basically we need to put a number between 30 and 40. Same thing for blog. So testimonials, quick edit. I'm going to give it a value of 31. Click on update. Same thing for the blog, quick edit. And this time let's give it a value of 32. Click on update. And now let's refresh our page. And voila, much cleaner because this respects the order of the navigation. You don't have to do it, but I find it way easier, especially as your website is going to grow. All right, with that out of the way, let's hover over blog and click on edit. Now click on the plus sign in the top left corner and click on the heading. Let's change the text to blog. And I'm actually going to click on the title of the page and click on the eye icon just to mask it. And the reason is simple. I want total control on how the title appears and I can do it with Spectra here. So let me select my heading. Then in general, where you see alignment, you want to select center. And where you see heading tag, you want to select H1. Next, click on the style tab. Then open the spacing sub tab. And you want to unlink the padding values and give it 0, 0, 20, and 0 pixels. So that's for the spacing all around our title. Next, we want to add a container, but first let's click on the document overview icon so that we have a better view of what we're doing in terms of structure. So next, let me click on the plus sign, container, and let's select this structure here. And before we continue, you probably know about the good habits to take. So let's rename our container. So once again, let me open the document overview, select my container, click on the three dots, rename, and let's call it blog archive. Click on save. And with our blog archive container selected, you want to go to the general tab. And where you see content box width, you want to change it to 1204. Next, click on the style tab, spacing. And where you see padding, you want to unlink the values and give it 0, 0, 120 and 0 pixels. Next, within the blog archive container, you want to click on the plus sign and start typing posts. And you see you have several blocks here. And the one we want to choose is this one, post grid. And as you can see, this is our manual post grid. I say manual as opposed to the one used with the Astra thing because this one here is a spectra block. So with our post grid selected, you want to go to the general tab. Post per page should be set to six. Now, let me scroll down. Post pagination should be on and the page limit should be set to six. Next, click on the pagination sub tab and let me scroll down here so you can see this is our pagination and you want to go from field to border. Awesome, we're getting there. Next, click on the content sub tab. The HTML tag should be set to H2 and we want to deactivate everything here. Next, click on the style tab, click on the title sub tab, where you see typography, click on the icon, set the font size to 21, then scroll down to letter spacing and set it to zero. Now let's close this. Where you see bottom spacing, you want to change the value to five pixels. Next, click on the read more link sub tab. Normal text color should be set to color number six and the hover text color should be set to color number nine. Next, let's click back on the normal tab. Background color should be set to color number five and the hover background color should be set to color number four. Next, let's scroll down. Border radius should be set to 30 all around. And where you see button padding, you want to unlink the values and give it 10 at the top, 20 right, 10 at the bottom and 20 left. And next, let's save our work. And now let's click on the preview icon. So as you can see, this is our new blog page. And if I click on any of the article, it takes me to the single blog post that we already set up with the Astra theme. So as you saw, we already created two versions, one with the free version of Astra and one with the free version of Spectra. They both use a grid, they have a different philosophy. If you want the quick and easy way, it's already built in the Astra theme, but as you saw, it doesn't really take much time to build it with the free version of Spectra. 
Now, as promised at the beginning of this video, I'm going to show you how to take your blog to the next level with Astro Pro and Spectra Pro. And if you don't yet have Astro Pro and Spectra Pro, whether you get it from the Astro website or from the Spectra website, as long as you get the essential toolkit, you get both. So in WordPress, you want to go to plugins, add new plugin, click on upload plugin, and then click on choose file, select the Astro Pro add-on plugin, and click on install now. Next, click on activate plugin. You will see an activation prompt here. Just click on it, paste your license key, and click on activate. Next, go to plugins, add new plugin, upload plugin, choose file, and select the Spectra Pro plugin. Click on open, install now, and activate plugin. Next, paste your license key, and click on activate. Next, go to Blocks Extensions, Pro, and make sure Loop Builder and Dynamic Content are activated. Now let's go to Astra, Dashboard, scroll down, and you want to make sure Site Builder is also activated. Next, go to Astra, Customize, Blog, Blog Archive, Blog Title Area, click on the arrow, and we want to go from Banner Layout 2 to Banner Layout 1. And then click on Publish. Now let's close this. And next you want to go to Astra Site Builder. And basically the Site Builder that comes with Astra Pro gives you super power. You can change any part of the website. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the post page. And next you want to go to Settings, Reading. And one more time, we're going to change this option. So where is the post page? Once again, we want to select blog and click on save changes. So if we take a look, let's hover over the name of our website, click on visit site, then let's go to blog. We are back at what we did in the first part of this video. So this is created by the Astra theme and we're going to override it. So let's go back to our dashboard and go to Astra site builder. And basically, as the name implies, the site builder from Astra gives you super power because now you can pretty much change any part on your website, even the dynamic parts. So let me show you. Let's go to archive, click on create new, and let's call it blog archive. Next, click on the plus sign and type heading. And we want to select the spectral block here with the blue outline. Let's change the text to blog and next go to the general tab and where you see alignment you want to set it to center and you want to change the heading tag to h1 next click on the style tab then go to the spacing sub tab and you want to unlink the margin values and give it 0 0 20 pixels and 0 next let's open the document overview click on the plus sign and we want to add a container just below our heading and let's select this structure here. And once again, let's reopen the document overview. Click on the three dots of our container, hit rename, and let's call it blog archive. Then click on save. And with our blog archive container selected, go to general and where you see content box width, change the value to 1204. Then click on the style tab, spacing, unlink the padding values, and you want it to give it 0, 0, 120 and 0 in pixels. Next, click on the plus sign and start typing loop builder. So here it is. And select portrait layout 1. And as you can see, once again, we have another grid. Our third one today after Astra and the post grid from the free version of Spectra. And basically, the loop builder is like the post grid on steroids. Actually, we created a video on the topic. So if you want to know more about the loop builder, make sure you watch this video. But of course, once you're done watching this one. So with our loop builder block selected, you want to go to the general tab and where you see post per page, you want to change it to six. Then you want to expand the loop builder in the document overview, select the wrapper and where you see column gap, you want to change the value to 20. So this is just for the spacing between the columns. Next, you want to expand the wrapper and select the container just below it. Then go to general and where you see minimum height, 
select pixels and give it a value of 470. Next, where you see HTML tag, click in the drop down and you want to select link. And right here, you see a link field. Click on the database icon. Data source should be set to current post and source field should be set to post permalink. And very important, click on the apply button. Next, let's close the container tab sub tab and let's open the layout sub tab. Align items should be set to center and justify content should be set to flex end. Now there's a lot of things going on here. So I'm just going to click here. And by the way, anything we do here on this instance is going to be reflected on all instances. Because if you look here in the document overview, there is one loop builder with a wrapper with a container. So anything you change in that container is going to be reflected in all instances. It's going to make sense in a moment. So let me select the time here and in the floating bar, click on the three dots, hit delete. And as you can see, it's been deleted all across the board. Let's repeat for the text here where you see no content, three dots, delete. And let's do the same with the image. So let me select the image, three dots, delete. And we just want to keep the title and the read more button. So next with my container selected, let's go to style and we see background, you want to select image. And right here you see a database icon, so click on it. Data source should be set to current post. Source field should be set to featured image and image size should be set to full. And once again, super important, don't forget to click on apply. All right, much better. Next, let's scroll down and where you see overlay type, you want to click on gradient. Let's scroll down a bit more. Then the first color should be completely transparent. So we'll just set the opacity slider all the way to the left. And the second color should be set to color number five. Now let's close this. And where you see angle, you want to change the value to 180. Next, open the border sub tab and you want to change the border radius to five pixels all around. Now let's scroll down. Let's open the spacing sub tab and let's change the padding to 20 pixels all around. All right, now let's select the title here, then go to general and where you see alignment, you want to align in the center. The heading tag should be set to H2 and next click on style. Typography font size should be set to 21 pixels. And if we scroll down, letter spacing should be set to zero. Now let's close this. Next, open the link sub tab and where you see color, you want to change the color to color number six. Now let's close this and let's open the spacing sub tab. And we want to change the padding values to 10, zero, zero, and zero. All right, we're getting there. Next, in the document overview, you want to select buttons. And then in the general tab, you want to align in the center. Then in the document overview, this time we want to select the button block because yes, you can have several buttons within a buttons container. So this time we're selecting the button block. Next, you want to go to style and where you see color, you want to change the color to color number nine. Then click on the spacing sub tab and where you see margin, you want to unlink the values and give it minus 10, zero, zero, zero. All right, next you want to select the loop builder here in the document overview and you will see this floating bar here and you want to click on this icon, add pagination. So let me click on it. And now as you can see, we have our pagination here. So as you can see, it added a buttons group here. So now I can expand, select for example, the first button, go to style, let's click on text and let's change the color to color number five. Then let's click on the background sub tab and change the color to transparent. And then click on the border sub tab and change the color to color number five. Now let's change the radius to 30. And next, let me open the spacing sub tab and link the padding values and give it 10, 20, 10 and 20. Next, I'm going to click on the copy paste spectra icon Click on copy, then select the second button, hit the same icon, but this time hit paste. And let's repeat the operation for the third one and paste. 
Next, click on the Astra settings icon, display and user conditions, and where you see display on, click on the drop down, and you want to select blog post page. And that's how the site builder knows how to override other pages, templates, dynamic templates, and so on. So click on return to post and hit save. Now let's go back to the front end and let's refresh. And there you go. As you can see, we have a beautiful blog page. We have pagination. So if I click on number two, here we are. Then I can click on any blog post and it takes me to a single blog post. Awesome. But we can do more. Actually, we can also change the single blog post template. So back in WordPress, you want to go to pages, all pages, and I'm going to keep this tab open and you'll understand why in a moment. So right now I'm just going to hover over Astra, then navigate to site builder. And instead of clicking on it, I'm just going to open in a new tab. Now let me navigate to this tab. And this time you want to go to single, create new, and let's call it block single post. Then click on publish and publish one more time. Next, click on the plus sign in the top left corner and select container. And we want to select this structure here. Now let's open the document overview, click on the three dots and let's rename it and let's call it hero header. Then hit save and let's close this. Next, with our container selected, go to general and where you see content box width, change the value to VW and the value to 100. And for the minimum height, select VH and the value should be set to 65. Next, let's close the sub tab and let's open the layout sub tab and justify content should be set to flex end. Next, click on style and select image and you will see a database icon. Click on it. Data source should be set to current post, source field to featured image and image size full. And once again, don't forget to click on apply. And as you do, the image appears. Next, let's scroll down and where you see overlay type, you want to select gradient. The first color should be set to transparent. So drag the opacity slider all the way to the left. And the second color should be set to color number five. Now let's close this. Let's scroll down and where you see angle, you want to change the value to 180. And next, open the spacing sub tab and let's give it a value of 60 pixels all around. Awesome, it's starting to take shape. Next, click on the plus sign. Let me scroll down and let's select heading. And if you don't see it, just start typing heading. You want to select the one with the blue outline, the spectra block. So click on it. Let's select all of our text. Then click on the database icon. Data source should be set to current post and source field to post title. And once again, as you may know, don't forget to click on apply. Now. Let's close this and still with our heading selected, you want to go to general, align in the center and the heading tag should be set to H1. Next, you want to go to style and where you see color, you want to change the color to color number six. Then click on the typography icon and set it to 40 pixels. All right. Next, here in the document overview, you want to select your heading, then click on the plus sign and you want to add a buttons block. And this is where the tab we previously left open in our browser will come in handy. So I'm just going to navigate to this tab, then hover over blog and you see view here, you want to right click and copy the link. Now let me go back to where I was and with my button selected, I go to the content sub tab and where you see link, I'm just going to remove the pound sign and I'm just going to paste the link I just copied. Now let me double click here and let me change the text to back to the blog. And next, let me click on the style tab. Normal text color should be set to color number six and the hover color to color number nine. Now let's open the background sub tab. The normal background color should be set to transparent and the hover color should be set to color number one. Now let's move on to the border. Normal color should be set to color number nine and the hover color should be set to color number one. Now let's change the radius to 30 pixels all around. And next let's open the spacing sub tab. 
let's unlink the padding values and let's give it 10, 20, 10, and 20. And now let's take a look and it looks great. Now let's open our document overview. Let's collapse our hero header. Click on the plus sign and let's add a new container. Let's select this structure and let's rename it. So you know the drill now, click on the three dots, rename, and let's call it content. Then hit save and let's close this. Now with our content container selected, let's go to general. And where you see content box width, you want to change it to 800. Next, go to style, spacing, and where you see padding, you want to unlink the values and give it 30, 30, 120, and 30 pixel. Next, you want to click on the plus sign and add a content block. Just click on it. Now, let's scroll down and right below the content block, we want to click on the plus sign. Let's scroll down and add a separator block. And with our block selected, go to style and change the separator height to two. And you want to change the color to a light color. In my case, I chose this one. Next, let me open the document overview, click on the plus sign and add a heading. And let's change the content to more posts. And with our heading selected, you want to go to general, make sure the heading is set to H2, then go to style, typography, and let's set the font size to 30 pixels. Now let's save. Now let's navigate to our other browser tab. Then you want to go to Astra, Site Builder, and we want to open the blog archive. So click on edit, open the document overview. Let's expand the blog archive container, select the loop builder, three dots and copy. Now let's navigate back to the browser tab where we were editing our single blog post. And with our heading selected, click on the three dots in the floating bar, add after, then right click here where you see type and hit paste. Next, let's open our document overview and let's expand our loop builder here. Then click on buttons, three dots and delete. Next, let's select our read more button here and let's delete the whole buttons group. So here in the document overview, you see buttons, right click on the three dots and delete. Now with our title selected here, you want to go to style, typography, and let's change the value to 17 pixels. Next, let's select our loop builder in the document overview. You want to change the post per page to three. Then go two steps down. You see the wrapper here and the container. Let's select this container once again. Then go to general and where you see minimum height, you want to change the value from 470 pixels to 150 pixels. Next, click on the Astra settings icon. Then click on display and user conditions. And we want to instruct the site builder to show this on all blog posts. Next, click on return to posts and let's hit save. Now, if we go back to the front end, this is what we had before. Now, let me refresh. And as you can see, it's looking beautiful. But there is one more thing I want to change. So back in WordPress, you want to go to Astra, customize, then go to blog, single post. And actually, let me show you. Let me open the blog here. Let's open a blog post. And now in container layout, I'm going to select full width. And there you go. So let me hit publish. And if we go back to the front end and refresh, Voila. So let's try this from the beginning. Let's go back to the blog. So as you can see, it's really stylish and consistent with the rest of our design with the border radius here. We have our pagination, so I can go to page two, open this blog post. I got a beautiful hero section here and I can go back to the blog in just one click. And as I scroll here, I have my text, more posts, and we can even add comments. So let me go back, close this, then go to Astra site builder, edit single blog post. Now let me scroll down, open the document overview. So let me select my content container here. Let's expand it, select the loop builder, click on the plus sign, and I'm just going to start typing 
comments and here I have the comments block. So let me click on it. As you can see, it added it here, hit save. And now if we go back to the front end and refresh, let's scroll down. And now as you can see, we can even add comments here. So as you can see, when it comes to adding a blog to your website, all roads lead to Rome. And you can achieve this straight up with Astra. You can also do it with the free version of Spectra or with a combo of both Astra Pro and Spectra Pro for the ultimate customization. And now that the desktop version of our website is ready, in the next video, I will show you how to make our website responsive for tablet and mobile devices.